It's hard to think of any place in the world whose inhabitants hate their own country as much as British people seem to hate theirs. We're encouraged by our woke cultural establishment to feel a deep sense of shame for our history and heritage, aren't we? Whether it be shame over colonialism or the transatlantic slave trade, which, you know, the British ended. We're expected to hate ourselves and our country for things that happened hundreds of years before any of us ever existed. Any sign of patriotism is treated as far-right extremism. If you display a Union Jack anywhere, you're automatically labelled a racist. Inevitably, where people hate the country they live in, they make no effort to look after it, do they? They chuck litter in the streets, out of their car windows, they fly tip down country lanes or by the side of dual carriageways, and the worthless, bone idle, grossly overpaid councils who receive eye-watering sums of money in council tax every month and are responsible for the upkeep of their districts display a total abnegation of responsibility. Public litter bins are left overflowing, street cleaning is practically non-existent, and green areas are left entirely untended. And of course, under the ideological capture of eco-extremists, councils excuse the total neglect of green spaces to rack and ruin as being purposeful rewilding, leaving nature untended to increase biodiversity. Consequently, green spaces have been abandoned by dog walkers who are sick of pulling ticks out of their dog's fur and taking them to the vet to have grass seeds removed from their paws and also abandoned by children who are fed up of falling foul of patches of stinging nettles and brambles. And far from encouraging biodiversity, abandoned, untidy, inhospitable, these vital green spaces, once healthy community hubs, have become creepy refuges for crackheads, haven't they? Walk five minutes through some woodland on the outskirts of any suburban area, you're likely to stumble upon some odious crackhead village. Undergrowth littered with burnt teaspoons, syringes, tinfoil, and if you venture into a town centre, you're extremely unlikely to see any street cleaners or street cleaning in operation. Aside from the unpleasantness of ubiquitous boarded up shop fronts, the streets themselves are filthy. And let's not forget, we're each of us paying considerable amounts of money in council tax for these fundamental matters of hygiene and cleanliness to be attended to. We're not getting the service we're paying for. We're being conned and extorted. We're living in escalating filth. And of course, that impacts people's mindset and behaviour. When people see low standards of public order and cleanliness all around them, their own personal standards of conduct become reduced to that same level. And inevitably, we find ourselves in a country where nothing works and nobody will take responsibility. Any rational person might think the solution to this all is a national campaign of civic pride. People need to be reminded that it's incumbent upon them to care for the environment they choose to live in and that Britain is somewhere that's worth caring for. But of course, that would probably get labelled as racism as well, wouldn't it?